everybody. I'm here to feed the uh, uh, kind of fact on the topic of the death penalty. Uh, and uh, Bob Cohen's uh, major claim was that the death penalty processes, uh, the, the death penalty process has severe flaws. Uh, her claims uh, consist of the death penalty fails to officially to a crime. Uh, that minors and un un uneducated and experienced brain an experienced brain not fully developed, inadequate to make uh, rational decisions. Uh, also, uh, death penalty has a negative effect on the economy. Uh, her third claim being the uh, justice system for capital punishment is flawed. And her last claim being that, um, that the death penalty is applied at random. Uh, many crime cases, uh, but are few are sentenced. So I'm gonna start off by uh, refuting the first claim. Uh, that the death penalty uh, fails to officially, effectively deter crime. Uh, and one of her one of her points, she uh, she doesn't uh, use enough. She she prevents the the the, the facts and the stats, but she doesn't back it up with any evidence. For example, she says since 1983, over 60 people with mental illness, illnesses or retardation have been executed in the United States. She doesn't support it with any citation. So we don't know we could trust her with the information that she provides us. So I kind of feel like that's a flaw in her, uh, in her argument. Uh, another another uh, huge uh, uh, claim that she has is that uh, the death penalty has a negative effect on the economy. Uh, I did my research on it and I found that, that um, for every, for every uh, uh, death penalty execution that they make, the government spends tax dollars um, over, I think it's over $60 billion just for one execution. Uh, and I did my research uh, that according to, according to, uh, according to the uh, st stats provided by the Office of California non pensionary Legacy Analysis Maintaining, uh, each death row prisoner and death row cost uh, the taxpayers about ninety thousand dollars. So uh, the point the, the point I'm trying to make is that if we put the the prisoners in death row instead of executing them, it would be cheaper. I mean, it would uh, if we leave them in death row, it's going to be more expensive. Although if we do the execution in death uh, with the death penalty, it's going to be more uh, expensive. So her fight, or her claim of this penalty has a negative effect on the economy. It does, but if we leave them in the, if we uh, do the death penalty, it's going to be cheaper than keeping them in death row for as long as, for example, like twenty years, when it could like, cost taxpayers over sixty-four thousand, uh, sixty-four million dollars per year just to maintain them in death row. Um, also, this money is coming out of the pockets of. Uh, Taxpayers, so it's coming out of, out of us. Uh, this money can be used for other uh, things, for example, uh, like protection in the streets, or like these people won't even be in the prisons in the first place. Uh, another one of our other claims is that uh, minors uh, uh, they don't have rational thoughts and they don't make rational decisions because their their brains aren't free, uh, free, uh, uh, fully developed yet. Um, in one of the cases, she says that uh, an incident of Gary Graham, the Gary Graham case, where Gary Graham was committed, uh, he was convicted at the age of 17 for murder. He had a he had a, done a robbery in a gas station and ended up killing the the older man. The 17 year old was uh, convicted for murder and was sent to uh, was like condemned to the death penalty. Uh, uh, what I want to refute is that um, that the death penalty only is is only effective in the manner that she says for minors. If the minor would have died, if, if, the, if the if the minor would have died at the age of seventeen, but the minor did not. He was not executed at the age of seventeen. He was ex executed at the age of thirty six, actually. So the fact that uh, he was uh, executed at the age of thirty six. Kind of um, um, doesn't 
the support fact that the miners uh, are being executed in, um, and it's not fair. And then one of our other, uh, one of our other, her last claim was uh, that the, um, on one of her second claims, she says that many cases have sentenced in innocent, uh, the innocent guilty, but in other, in another claim, she mentions that the death penalty is applied at random, so saying that the um, the innocent are being guilty. And then you say uh, that the, the people being executed are chosen at random. Kind of doesn't tie up with what you're saying. Uh, and then the real issue right here is that the, that the guilty people aren't getting, uh, the, the people that aren't guilty are uh, getting sentenced to death. It's the representation that the, that the, the victims are being uh, appointed. Uh, I think that's more of a problem that we got to focus on, like, uh, getting people better uh, attorneys, better people to represent them. Because ultimately, if you have a good representative and you support your time, I mean, your, your claim, then you should be fine. All right, Juan, you start at the beginning in the preview suggesting that there are five issues that the advocate's talking about. Uh, you labeled them inconsistently, so I got one, two, three, and then three. I wasn't sure where this was all going and got equally confusing when you got into the body of the speech because after the first point that you labeled, there's no numerical signposting at all and you kind of jump back and forth between a couple of issues, which is uh, confusing. On the first point on deterrence, you basically just challenge the argument about the number of people who are mentally retarded who've been convicted of the crimes and that's the last that we hear about the deterrence issue and whether or not it is effective at uh, preventing crime. I'm not sure how that issue proves one way or the other that the death penalty deters or that it doesn't deter. And without any further discussion of it, you just kind of move on to some other issues. You get involved in the, um, the economic issue and it got very confusing. At one point you used the term $60 billion, then later on you came on to $64 million. I think you meant million when you said $60 billion earlier. That was just a little confusing. Uh, and it's still confusing because you say the legislative analyst says that we are spending $90,000 a year for death row. Well, if they're not on death row, uh, they're still in prison. Uh, if they are in death row, is it costs us more to keep them in death row? And I'm not exactly sure how executing costs more. It's the same group of prisoners. Your whole argument here just seemed like it was going in circles. What would the difference be if we convicted people and sent them to prison for life versus if we uh, had to maintain them on death row and then execute them also? That, I think, would be the comparison that we'd want to have. And I'm not sure that either side gives a very strong comparison on this. And I was... I was bit, frankly befuddled as to what your argument on this point was. So I think that that's a little bit problematic. Then you come up to the argument about minors, and I think you've got an interesting point here that no minors are being executed, but they are being convicted and then being executed apparently uh, 19 years later. Um, that I think is, there might be an argument about whether or not that's fair. There's a single example that's being cited here. Um, you know, I, I don't know what the current status of the law is on this. I don't know when Gary Graham was convicted. I don't know that that is uh, a common practice. I think that you are, you know, you, you've got an interesting point here. I don't know what it gets you in the long run. And then the whole argument at the end about uh, you know, inadequate representation, uh, it sounds like you're conceding that there is an argument here that there's a problem with the present system because people are inadequately represented. Uh, so that's not really about the flaw of the death penalty. I think that should be the argument that you're making, that's a flaw of the judicial process, not a flaw of the death penalty. And I think that that's the way that argument ought to be presented. All right, thank you. Did you have an outline for me?